Good morning, Belonging Fellowship. Here we are on this Sunday, ready to worship and to join in once again with all of God's children to lift up God's name through praise and worship, through scripture reading, through offering, and through hearing the word of God proclaimed together. I want to say once again, thank you for uh, joining with us in our first two services, and we could not have done it without you. So we ask that you will continue to join us, that you will continue to worship with us, and that you will continue to grow with us as we keep pressing towards what the vision of belonging fellowship has placed out there through God's guidance. So we also like for you just to take the moment for those of you on YouTube, if you would just go down to the bottom and click subscribe, we would love for you to be able to have notifications when we have events pop up and you may not be aware of it. And then also those on Facebook Live, if you would just go ahead and go down to the bottom, bottom and click the share button, the more you share, the more people get God's word preached to them and they get to join in with us for worship just to enjoy the atmosphere of of virtual worship. So as we get ready for worship, I believe Psalm 5 verses 7 through 8 gives us a great place to start with getting ready our minds and heart for worship. And so here it says, but I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. I don't know about you this morning, but I came with my humbled heart. I came down to bow down and to worship the God who created me, the author and finisher of my faith. But if that's your testimony this morning where you just feel like you need to bow down, why don't you just take the time to bow your head and to lift up your hands and to say, God, I am prepared to worship. Uh, belonging fellowship, let's get ready to enter into worship. Let us pray. God, we thank you today because one, you're just simply an amazing God. God, we thank you that you have allowed us once again to journey in front of, of our phones or our computers where we get to worship with you. God, we thank you for belonging, fellowship, and uh, what you have done for us thus far. And God, we look forward in awe and exuberant joy and amazement what you will do with this ministry. So God, we ask now that you would bless this service. We ask that you would uh, block every hindrance from uh Help, uh, hindering us from being able to receive your word. So God, we're thankful that we get to worship this morning. We're thankful that we get to praise your name this morning. We're thankful that we're get, get, getting to hear a word from heaven. God, we just simply are thankful and grateful and in awe of you. So God, would you speak through the preacher this morning? Would you uh, sing and would your melodic heavenly harmonies come through the worship leader on this morning? And God, would we do everything that's in pleasing in your sight? Lord, have your own way in this service. Have your way in through in and through each and every one of us. It's in Jesus name we all say and pray. Amen. Let us get ready to worship with Minister Purvis. Welcome to the Belonging Fellowship. We're so glad to have you with us this morning. Lord, we just praise and we worship your name for a new morning. We thank the Lord. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, clap those hands. New every morning, new every morning, your mercies are new every day. Yeah, yeah. New every morning, new every morning, your mercies are new every day. Help me sing new every Mercy, oh, new every morning. Oh, your mercies are new every day. This is the day you have made. Every morning. 
morning, new every your mercy. chasing after you yes i am chasing after you lord i am chris yes i am yes you are yes you are i am forgetting yes i am what lies and i am chasing after you yes i am This is a day you have made. I'll rejoice and for you. Come on, clap those hands. Yeah. Come on and give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on and glorify the Lord. Come on and praise his holy name. Lord, we just usher in your presence. We love you, Lord. There's no victory without you, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your power. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. Hey. Yes, Lord. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness comes, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. Because I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. It belongs to you, Lord. Yes, it does. It belongs to Jesus. Whatever you're going through, just listen to these words. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus And every war he wages, he will win Yes, sir I'm not backing down from any giants I know, I know how this story is Do you believe it? I know, I know how this story is 
Jesus, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle. The battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, it does. I'm going to see a victory. Gonna see a victory. Oh, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Hallelujah. Battle belongs to you, Lord. It belongs to you, Lord. If you believe that, if you trusting in the Lord. If you have the faith, you'll say this and agree with me. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turned it for good. You turned it for good. How many know that the devil meant it for your bad? But God, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turned it for good. You turned it for good. You take what the enemy, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turned it for good. Yes, you did. You turned it for my good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Oh, yes, you did. You turned it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it for my good, yeah. Yes, you did. Turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant, yeah. And you turn it for my good. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Oh, and I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. You take it and you turned it for my good, Jesus. Yes, you did. I give you all the glory and praise for it. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You turned it for my good, and I love you, Jesus. I praise your name. I worship you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. Yeah. Oh. We're going to see a victory. We have the victory. Who are we calling on for victory? We call it on God. We call it on Jesus, the King, strong, almighty. Yes. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Yes, Lord. Every man will bow down and say you are king so let's start right now why would we wait king of glory view this place i just want to be with you i just want to be with you King of glory, feel this place. I just.
just want to be with you. Yes, sir. I just want to be with you. Help us sing. Yes, the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Every man. Burn So let's start right now. Let's start now, church. Why would we wait? We can praise Him now. Oh, with victory. King of glory. Yes, Lord, I feel this place. I just want to be. Then in your presence, Jesus, cling of glory. Feel this place. I just want to be. Just want to be with you. And we'll sing hallelujah until you come again. Yes, we will. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Yeah. And we'll sing hallelujah until you come again. Yes, we will. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Help us sing, yeah. Yeah. Until you come again Lord, I can't wait for the day when we'll say Sing hallelujah Lord, we will dance in your presence Dance in your presence Dance in your presence Dance in your presence Just wanna be with you. just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Right now, if you are looking at this broadcast and you understand that only the presence of God changes the atmosphere. Only the presence of God removes hurt. Only the presence of God releases depression, anxiety. And if you are dealing with any of those things today, I ask you to bring it all to the altar, wherever you are. Get down on your knees, lift your hands up into the sky. Hold your head up high, say, Lord, I welcome you into my heart. I give it all to you, Lord. No other name I know. You are the one, Jesus, that can fix anything. And we just want to be in your presence. We just want to be with you. We want to be with you. We want to be with you, Jesus. We want to be with you. We want to be with you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We surrender ourselves. We surrender our hearts, Lord. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's continue to worship and praise the Lord. Come on, the name of Jesus. We love to call your name. It's something. 
All right, Belong Fellowship, we're thankful for the worship that just happened. We hope that it was liberating for you. And now it's time for us to worship through our offering. I uh, once again would like to express our gratitude for the offerings that were given on the first two Sundays. And we thankful that you are helping to build God's ministry, but also to help sow into somebody's lives, life who will actually get to receive the benefits of the giving that you're giving through our ministry projects that we have going forward. And just to give you a little a glimpse of what will happen on next month in October, Breast Cancer Aware Month, we are going to have a mobile unit come into Mebane, North Carolina for women who need mammograms so that way we can help protect ourselves yes we got to worry be worried about our spiritual through salvation through sanctification and then ultimately pressing towards glorification but we also should be concerned about our physical body we should be taking care of ourselves and your offerings are going to help us be a blessing to somebody who may not be able to afford a mammogram so that's what the type of ministry we have here. It's not like I said, we're not going for a mortgage. We're not going for utility bills. We are simply trying to be a blessing for others. So we got three ways to give. And then there's a fourth way. But I'm going to put that on the bottom of the screen so that way I don't stumble over my words and just make sure that you see it at the bottom. And that's our P.O. box. But then also we have Cash App. We have Venmo. And then we have Givelify as well. So you can see all these uh, ways to give, including our P.O. box, if you want to send the slow uh, mail through check or cash in an envelope, we'll take that as well. We're not going to be stingy about how you're going to bless us so we might be blessings to others. So let's pray over the offering, and then, and then we'll allow you some time to go ahead and sow your seed. So let us pray. God, we're thankful for all the great blessings that you have bestowed upon this ministry. God, we ask that you would continue to live, lead people to give cheerfully and that you would help them to, to give towards a cause that might help somebody else. God, we ask that you would help us to continue to be good stewards of, our, of these blessings that you give us. And that, God, that we would just simply do what you've called us to do with the money. And that is to go and help people have resources and access to resources that they may not have had. Yes, God, we want to sow a seed that you'll bless us. But, God, we also know that sometimes the blessing is us being a blessing to others. So, God, we thank you and we love you. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we say and pray. Amen. time for our scripture reading. Today's scripture comes from the book of Numbers, beginning in chapter 13, at verse 17, reading from 17 to 9, 20, and then skipping down 26, and ending in 29. And there in the New International Version, you'll see, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the Negev and on into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they wall unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. And then jumping down to verse 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Nak there. The Malkites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and land along the Jordan. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we all say, thanks be to God. This week's sermon is entitled, Faith to Conquer. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to join together virtually. We thank you for everyone who listens and tunes in. And we pray, God, that this message is a blessing to them. 
Now, God, speak so that we hear a word from thee. And I pray that you shallow me, O Lord, shallow me, until there's more of thee and less of me. Shallow me, O Lord, shallow me, until there's more of thee and less of me. Shallow me, O Lord, shallow me, until there's all of thee and none of me. And I'll give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. It is in Jesus the Christ's name. And we all say, Amen. Okay, so I think it is safe to say that almost everyone is afraid of something. Okay, I'm going to confess that I am not a fan of snakes. And yes, I am afraid of them. I do not like the way they look. I can't tell you which way they will go. I don't know how that they uh, uh, get around on their bellies. I don't even understand why God made them to move the way they do. And let's not talk about that icky looking tongue. I am a woman enough to say I am afraid of snakes. I am afraid of the snakes that are on the ground and the snakes that can stand up and walk of the human nature. A snake is a snake when you just don't know what they will do and when they will bite. But we do know they can be deadly. Sit with that. I am talking about both the ones that crawl around on their belly and the ones that you thought were your friends. Snakes are just dangerous. I think that's a justifiable reason to say why I am afraid. However, I have three people in my life that are close to me that are afraid of frogs. One of which is my best friend uh, that I call my sissy. Uh, her name is Lauren. She is a pediatric nurse that will run towards those in danger to save them, but will freeze in her tracks or run the opposite way of a frog. I remember one night I stayed on the phone with her while her father had to get out of his bed to come get her out of the car because frogs were near the door. Lord rest uh, his soul and he was calm and nurturing as he guided her safely past the two or three frogs that were in the driveway. Not only Lauren, but two of the blogging fellowship founders are afraid of frogs too. My first one is my sister-in-law, Eva. Eva faces high school students each day and is up to traveling everywhere, but let a frog come anywhere near her and that athlete will stop in her tracks. I have been on the phone with her when she decided to stay in her car until the frog hopped away from her front door. And the second belonger is Thais. Thais was uh, afraid of leaving her apartment one day. She said she opened the door and she saw a frog like standing there waiting on, waiting for her. And she didn't want to go outside, so she ran to go back inside and she waited until the frog went away. I asked all of them, why are you afraid of frogs? And Thais was the one who could give me a real justifiable answer. Lauren said, I don't know. I think it's just the way they look. Uh, and Eva was kind of the same way. But Thais said she had a reason because that she was afraid. She said when she was younger, a boy threw a frog on her. She was traumatized by that event. And she just doesn't like that they are slimy and unpredictable. Now, you may not be afraid of snakes or frogs, but you may be able to name what you are afraid of. See, these are our external fears. Like Thais, these are usually caused by specific events in your past. External fears are caused by something outside of you. Typically, it is only triggered under specific instances when you encounter what it is that frightens you. Now, because of this trigger, these fears are easily recognized. Most of these fears are caused by some traumatic event in your past, like her. For instance, if you got bit by a spider at a young age, guess what? You just might develop a phobia of, of spiders. Your experience may have taught you to avoid them. Yet some external fears are because you do not know what to expect. Just like these unpredictable frogs, we have to be determined to not let these external outside fears hold us hostage. 
See, sometimes we are afraid of the unknown or afraid because someone else has convinced us that we should be afraid. And that is exactly where we are in the text today. God spoke to Moses and told Moses uh, to send men to scout out the country of Canaan that I am going to give the people of Israel. He tells him to send one man from each tribe. Each one uh, needed to be one of their tried and true leaders. So Moses sent them off. Now, before they left, he gave them specific instructions. He said, go up through the Negev and then into the hill country. Look over the land, see what it's like, assess the people. Are they strong or are they weak? Are there few or are they many? Observe the land. Is it pleasant or harsh? Describe the towns where they live. Are they open camps or fortified with walls? He even tells them to check the soil and see if it's fertile or barren. Check the forest and check the plants and bring back a sample of the uh, things that you find that are growing from the trees. So the 12 men left. They went on this journey that Moses sent them on. They stayed for uh, 40 days and came back. When they came back, they presented themselves before Moses and Aaron and all the people of Israel. They reported and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told the story of their trip. We went to the land to which you sent us and oh, it is flowing with milk and honey. Just look at the fruit that they have. The only thing is that they have people who live there and those people are fierce. Their cities are huge and their walls are fortified. And the bad thing is we saw descendants of giants and they were all in the country land and they are established all around the Mediterranean Sea. Only one of them had a different story. See, the rest of them painted this picture of all this mass uh, people and giants coming up against them. But one spoke up. Caleb interrupted and said, uh, y'all need to be quiet. Um, I believe that we can go up and take the land. If we just do it now, we can all get together and we can do it. But the other said, we can't attack those people. Uh, they're way too strong for us. Now, get this. They began to spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scouted out the land from one end to the other. It's land that will swallow us up whole. Everybody that we saw was huge and everybody there were giants. You know how the people began to spread things and add extra stuff to stories when they're trying to tell a story. They said, we saw these giants walking around and beside them, we felt like little bitty grasshoppers. And they looked down on us like we were little bitty grasshoppers. Y'all, this story makes me pause and think about how 12 people experienced the same thing, yet their report is different. Caleb is the only one that speaks up with true faith and says, wait a minute, we can do this. Caleb did not deny the other's interpretations. He did not say, no, we didn't see any giants. He did not deny anyone else's reality. Caleb just had a different level of faith. Now, we can all be in the same situation and our level of faith in God and confidence in ourselves determines how we view the situation. The others saw themselves as small and unable. They viewed themselves as too weak to take the land. They say that uh, to themselves that they are inferior to the others. In other words, they were afraid because of the other people's perceptions, these, these men who brought back this report because of their perception and their fear, they began to cause everyone to be afraid. All of the Israelites began to be afraid. Now get this, the other people never saw what they saw. They stayed back in the camp with Moses and Aaron, yet they depend on the perception of the others to determine their future. 
Now, belongers, be careful. Be careful whose report or opinion you follow. I want to advise you to be careful. Be careful who decides if you are too weak. Be very careful. Be careful who you listen to. See, they saw fear and was afraid. So they planted fear in the entire community. They planted fear and gossip throughout the rest of them. Yet, oh, Caleb, Caleb stands boldly and says, oh, yes, we can go and take the land that God promised us. Caleb's perception was, yes, we can. When others doubted, Caleb was confident. Yet the community listened to the negativity and the fear of the others. The whole community of Israelites were in an uproar. They were crying and wailing all night long. And all the people of Israel began to grumble and complain to Moses and Aaron. The entire community was in on this gossip and they were spreading all these lies that they began to say, why did we just die in Egypt? Or why are we in this wilderness? Why has God brought us to this country to kill us? Our wives and our children are about to become plunder. Why don't we just get our stuff and head back to Egypt right now? Y'all, they begin to grumble and complain. This happens because some folk planted fear and negativity in their minds. Look how quickly they decide to give up on heading into the promised land. Look how quickly they forget God's promises and trust in the word of a few. Then, y'all, what they do next, they turned even more and soon they were all saying to one another, we need a new leader. Let's pick a new leader. Let's head back to Egypt. Moses and Aaron are hearing this. Moses and Aaron did not bring this fear or negativity to the group. They did not report this report, yet they begin to blame Moses and Aaron because they are the leaders. Oh, let me tell you, folk will turn on you just so they have someone to blame. They don't get mad with the ones bringing the negativity. They're not going to get mad with the ones that are gossiping and complaining. No, they turn to the leadership and began to complain. Be careful on your jobs. Folk will turn on you. Be careful in your or community. Folk will turn on you. But when they turn on you and you know it is not your fault, you have to do what Moses and Aaron did. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces in front of the community. Moses and Aaron turned back to the God who gave the orders to send the 12. Now, not only did Moses and Aaron turn to God, Caleb join them in returning to God too. As a matter of fact, it was two of them out of the 12. Caleb and Joshua ripped their clothes and addressed the people of Israel. And Caleb says, the land we walked through and scouted out is very good land. Very good indeed. If God is pleased with us, he will lead us into this land, a land that flows as they say with milk and honey, and he'll give it to us. Just don't rebel against God and don't be afraid of those people. They have no protection and God is on our side. Don't be afraid of them. Caleb speaks up loud and clear and says, look, God is on our side. God promised it to us. And all we have to do is trust in God and God will deliver it to us. God is the one if we choose not to be afraid. Caleb is saying, look, I don't care what is standing between us and the promised land filled with milk and honey. If God is with us, we will get to the other side. Y'all, I wish I had some Caleb's join us in belonging fellowship. Some Caleb's that will say, we may not see the way, but we believe God will bring us through. We may not know the details, but God spoke and gave the vision. And now we are going to trust in the process because God is in control. I need some Caleb's to say, I am trusting in God and we will 
will thrive. I need some Caleb's to say, I will lay on my face in prayer, believing that God will make a way out of no way. Get this. Caleb saw the same thing the others saw. And now he and Joshua are telling the folk, look, we can do it. We can conquer these people because they have no protection. Yet we have the protection of the mighty God. Belongers, I know you may be faced with some tough decisions. I know things may look like you will never make it to God's promise. And I know you have folk in your life telling you that you are too weak or too small. You have folk in your life telling you all the reasons why you will not succeed. Oh, believe me, I have folk telling me that belonging fellowship will never work because they have never seen anything like this before. But I I need some Caleb's and Joshua's that will trust in the mighty God. Trust that what God has for you is for you. Trust that you can make a difference in the world. Trust that you are big enough, strong enough, mighty enough, powerful enough. You are enough to face the giants in front of you. Now, I know it may feel scary, but Caleb is saying, do not be afraid of those people because we have God on our side. Belongers, do not be afraid of whatever you are facing because God is on your side. Get this, God is watching to see whose report you're going to believe. Now, I, the question for all of us is, will you believe the report of the 10 naysayers that are running scared? Or will you believe the one, the report of the two that are saying, oh yes, we can do it. Now, let's be clear. Your future is tied to the decisions that you make. Your future is impacted by who you choose to follow. Your God is watching those who follow the naysayers and did not have the faith to believe that God would bring them through. They got what they deserve. God said to them, you will not enter into the land of milk and honey, but Caleb and Joshua. Caleb, the bold one who stood firm in his faith. Caleb, the one who spoke hope when others spoke fear. Caleb, the one who trusted God. Caleb, the one who tried to encourage the people to not be afraid. Caleb, the one who stood up to the crowd and the crowd wanted to stone him. God said to Caleb and Joshua, you will inherit the land and I will give you the milk and the honey, I just want you to know you have to choose who you're going to follow. I just want to know whose report will you believe? Will you fall to the external fear or trust in your faith-filled eyes? Trust in the eyes that see the problem but know the God who can get you through. Trust in the eyes that see a way out of no way. Trust that God will send a Caleb in your life to tell you, come on, you can conquer it. Conquer your fears. Conquer your your doubts. Conquer anything that stands in your way. Conquer anything that is blocking you from what God has for you. See, it is easy to be one of the 10 that has negativity and doubt. It is so easy to be one of the ones to plant the, the seeds of doubt and hatred. It is so easy to be the ones that are afraid of what is in front of you. But it takes real faith to see the giants and still be willing to go anyway. It is faith in Caleb that is in, it's inside of him that is saying to Caleb, get up and you can do this. It is faith in God that he decides to tell the people, do not be afraid. And I am standing today with that same faith. And I am telling each one of you, do not be afraid. I know it looks scary. I, I know you don't have a map to tell you how this is going to work out, but don't be afraid. I, I know you don't know what's on the other side of this situation, but do not be afraid. I, I know it feels like you are not going to make it through the situation, but do not be afraid. You can conquer this. 
And how do I know you can conquer it? I know you can conquer it because God is your protection. Caleb tried to tell people, the people ahead of us have no protection. We are walking with the mighty God. The longers, we are walking with the mighty God. And as long as we keep our eyes on God, as long as we keep our faith in God, as long as we trust God's way, God will bring us through. I'm looking for some Caleb's. And not just me, God is looking for some Caleb's and Joshua's and saying, do you trust me to come a different path? Do you trust me that I'm going to get you through this situation? Do you trust me that I'm going to lead you to the promised land? Y'all, I have the faith of Caleb that says, I know God has better for me. I have the faith of Caleb that says, I will not be afraid. Oh, I see the giants. I see the pitfalls. I see everything that can come up against me, but I am walking by faith. And I believe that if I walk by faith and I speak life into my own situation, God will make a way. And so I'm asking you, do not be afraid. Put down your fear. Can you put down your fear? Can you walk and not be afraid? Don't listen to what everybody else has to say. Listen to the promise of God. And if God promised it, God will deliver it. Don't worry about what the people will say. Don't worry about how they may judge you. Don't worry about them saying they're going to stone you. Do not be afraid. Because how you move and who you follow will determine your future. And I don't want you to be one of the ones that follow the 10 and end up uh, not inheriting the promised land. I want you to be just like Joshua and Caleb, be a promise that you too, out of the 12, you too will see the promised land. I don't know what you're experiencing right now, but I know you don't have to experience it alone. I don't know if there are other folk around you telling you what you can't do, that you're too small, you're too weak, you don't have this, you don't have that, and that you're not enough. I want you to connect with us so we can speak life into you and tell you that you are more than enough through Jesus Christ. I want you to connect with us so we can build you up and encourage you to hold your head up and believe that you can make it through. Do not be afraid. You can conquer this. And you will be able to say, it was all God. Now, if you're looking for a place to grow, a space to connect, a ministry to do real work, a ministry that's looking to change the community, one neighborhood at a time. If you're looking for a place that's determined to speak life into people, one heart at a time, one household at a time, until we make a difference in the world. If that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for space to belong, belonging fellowship is that space. I invite you to come. Come because there is space for you to belong. Send us a message, an email, any way you can, and we'll connect with you. So we can remind you, do not be afraid. You will go into the promised land. Belong in Fellowship, we'd like to thank you once again for joining us on this Sunday morning for worship. And we continue to pray God's blessing on you. And we ask that you would continue to pray for us. And so we offer this benediction for you on today based off what you've heard in the Faith to Conquer sermon that Pastor Latanya preached in your hearing. And this benediction is simply, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. 
The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And if no one has told you today, let us be the first to say, we love you, and so does the Lord. We'll see you next time. Bless you.